G'day guys, we have a mega grinder comparison for you here. We are super pumped. dwayne has got the biz. Yeah, we've got eight brands, all trade brands in yep. Australia. Yep. We don't think there's any others out there with a trade warranty. <clears throat> we've got AG, Bosch, Metabo, Hitachi, Hilti, Makita, DeWalt, and Milwaukee. In the Milwaukee. They're all 18 volt, except yep. for the Hilti, which is 21.6. Yeah, a little bit of a cheap. Because that's what they do. Yep. They're all single battery, and they're all five inch. Yeah. The best model from each brand. Yeah, it's absolute pumping, guys, so we are gonna get stuck into it right now. It's not a short one, but it's a good one. All right, so we're now doing the power test, and the way that we've done the power test is by putting weights on the end of the grinder and using a jig to hold the grinder in place and allowing it to pivot on its battery. Um, that's why you can see the tape there. Yep. The tape, that's, the batteries move a little bit in the connection with the tools. Everybody would have noticed that if you've ever used one. That just eliminates it. We haven't covered all events. There's no benefits to it other than to stop movement and stop the tool from twisting and jamming. That's right. It's not a perfect jig, but it does allow us to um, at least not have just user error yep. introduced into every test. It's a hell of a lot more scientific than most. That's right. Now, you'll see that three of these tools have just cut out. They can't handle the 2.5 kilogram test, and actually neither can the Hitachi on this 24 mil bar. And what we're doing is we're adding weights each time. So the bar itself, the all thread, weighs 1.25 kilograms, and so does each weight that we put on. So they're now doing 3.75 kilograms yep. on that 24 mil bar. These power it along, but Bosch has just dropped out there. Bosch just cut out, but we have moved it onto the 30 mil bar because this is actually an easier test than the 3.75. Because we've backed off the weight a little bit. That's right, we're back to just the bar now, just the 1.25 kilograms. And they're all chowing through that quite easily. If you keep watching from here on, uh, you will notice that the DeWalt wins every test. Um, so it is the fastest cutter. Yep. Um, although it was slowest on the first cut, but that's just because you get funny things when you when it you. Did, the it disc. just seemed to have like a bit of a, a bit of a glazing over with that first start if you've got a light hard pressure on it. Yeah, that's right. So don't pay too much attention to that. Um, you can see the the Makita and the Milwaukee are pretty fast, not too far behind the well, The Bosch so is probably fourth fastest. Yep. Uh, we're now on two and a half kilograms of weight. Um, on the 30 mil bar, which by the way is a huge test for a cordless grinder. There's a lot of continuous weight for that size rod too. 30 mil bar, that's a lot of surface area yep. the disc is in. But the Bosch has just tapped out. Bosch couldn't handle it. Makita almost made it, but uh, couldn't couldn't make it. So only the DeWalt and the Milwaukee heading to the next 3.75 kilograms now. Which that, that's a lot of weight guys, if you try and actually work out how much weight you're putting down the head of the grinder. Yeah. So 375 is quite a bit. We, I actually thought that, oh yeah, no, you know, we'd be pushing five, ten kilograms on, on grinders when we use them. You soon found out that was not the case. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> this is a lot of weight. Um, so they've both done that uh, pretty pretty easily. Yep. We're now having to use bigger weights to get to five kilograms, which is just ridiculous. The DeWalt cut out straight away, electronic yep. protections cut in and saved the tool. So its job was a little walky. Starting to slow down a little, but... It's groaning a bit. Yeah. So I'm not sure where, where the electronic protection's gone in this unit. Yeah. Uh, if there ever was any, but it is a, it's a powerhouse. Yeah. Also, you'll notice that we've used the biggest batteries available on each tool. Yep. Um, so even up to 9 amp hour and, and, and such, except for the AEG, which it actually can't do these tests on the, the force. No. Milwaukee just cut out there with 6.25 kilograms. Okay, I've assembled all of the specifications for each of the grinders for you to have a look at. Um, we don't have time to look at them in great depth now, so pause now if you want to look, otherwise we'll keep moving. Okay, we have our runtime test now, um, where we're doing 20 mil round bar with 1.25 kilograms of weight on each, which is a pretty tough test really for a grinder. 100%. Um, we're using 5 amp hour batteries wherever we could. Yep. Uh, Hitachi, we only had 6. Metabo and Hilti are 5.2 amp hour batteries, and the Hilti is actually a 21.6 yep. um, volt unit. So I took that into account and uh, made them all into consistent per amp hour scores, yes. which you'll see. Yep. Um, but the Hilti actually doesn't have the weight on it. No, you'll notice there. So it wouldn't do it with the weight as all the rest could three times. So now Dwayne's just actuating it by hand. All of a sudden, magically, after about 10 cuts, 
it could do it with the weight. So it's a bit of a variable. It, it's, there's nothing we could do. It was quite strange. Yeah. Um, I think it's right on the border of, of being able to do this test. Yeah, correct. And the other thing is the AEG had a, a stutter as well. It farted around and um, it was it was quite odd. But that is their 5 amp hour. Their 6 standard and their 6 force is no better. In fact, it's worse. Yeah, which was really strange, yeah. we thought. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, on its 5 anyway, like everything else. Yeah. And... Uh, You'll notice the Bosch has just gone red. Yeah, just gone red and cut out. So that actually got a 10-minute break, which may be a little controversial. Yeah. But it had plenty of battery left. It's You'll still... notice that gauge is absolutely smoking gauge. It's got the disco lights on it. Yeah. It tells you if there's an electronic um, overheater or something like that, but yeah. it still shows the battery indicator, which is great. Yeah, yeah. So it still had lots of battery, so we gave it a, uh, another go. Yep. Um, in the meantime, the Hitachi's um, stopped at 15 and a half. Yep. Um, on its six amp hour battery, so um, not great, not the best. No, um, you can see the AEG has just got 17 and a half. Yep, a couple more cuts, but less amperage. Yep, um, the DeWalt and the Milwaukee have done pretty well on 19 and 20 cuts, respectively. And then the Metabo has just killed it. Yeah, you were saying before they're known for the grinders, which they are, but that still snuck up on me a little bit from having used it. So uh, that's that's a great result. Yeah, really good result. Uh, the Bosch and the Hilti have both done 23 and a half cuts. Yep. So not a bad result there. No. But the Makita smoked it. Yeah. 5.4 per amp hour. Yeah. Fantastic. Really good score. Um, so that's the end of our runtime test. Um, on to something else. All right. Now we're doing a flap disc test, and we're using 60 grit Klingspore flappers for this. Uh, Klingspore are our major sponsor for this video. Thank you so much, Klingspore. They're a German-made company who've been making abrasives since 1899. Yeah, which is a fair stretch uh, for anybody, I think. So uh, do yourself a favour. Hit their website link in our description at the end of this video. Go and check out their massive range. Discs, diamond abrasives, drill bits, etc. Get over and check them out, guys. All right, so just wanted to point out that we are using the big batteries for this one. Um, so, you know, your big 9 amp hours or your lithium HDs or whatever. Yep. The best batteries for each tool. Big bangers. Um, and overall, they all did this just fine. You know, we tried to apply pretty similar pressure. Um, you can see the Hilti's done. It was just a dream. It was an absolute jet, wasn't it? It was really smooth and super, super fast. Um, the AEG and the Metallo felt like they were a little bit loaded. But having said that, they weren't slower. Yeah, it was a bit surprising because we sort of, after these tests, you know, we, this is a field test, guys. After this test, we write down some notes. I thought that they were a little slow, but they, they were cool. No, they were just fine. Um, this, along with the, the steel SHS that we're cutting now and the concrete test that we're about to do after this, they're just a field test. Yep. They're to help us um, pick up the little little uh, intricacies of each unit. Yeah. Um, the things that make them unique. Yeah, we have to use them for hours, obviously, to to give you guys um, an idea of what we felt and what we thought over those hours and hours and two years. That's right. So these tests, they're not scored. They're just, um, they're, they're just giving us a good feel yep. for each unit. Cool. Right, so, I mean, I haven't really regulated the depth control on this concrete very well. So again, don't pay attention to the speed. This is about how smooth and good these are to hold. And there were some differences. Yeah, there was. Yeah, to be honest, the, the Hilti, the AEG, and the Metabo, and DeWalt, we both agree were really smooth. They were great. Yeah. Uh, the rest, they're, they're okay. Uh, the, like, like, what I'll consider good and all, the Milwaukee, they were quite rough. Like, noticeably rough. Yeah, yeah. I think you go through a few extra discs using the... Using the Milwaukee and steel. Yeah, and it's not the first time I've heard that either, unfortunately. So it actually it qualified something for us. However, the Hilti did drop this diamond cutting wheel twice. Yep, yeah. Uh, the flange come open, which we hadn't had that issue before. No. Nope. Uh, the Hitachi lever, that's popped open. You'll see Dwayne muck around with it a couple of times. That's actually a pain. Yeah, that's why it's still going. Yeah, it's yeah three, that's true. Three times it popped open. Yeah, and the Makita one, we had to push it back in once because it rattled open, which yeah. is interesting. So a few things that we've noticed across each tool in the whole testing procedure. One or two of these we've had for a couple of years using it, and yep. then we've been using this whole procedure. Uh, so the AEG, 
First thing is, you got the thread in the top for the handle, yep. which I've been banging on about for ages, and Dwayne noticed it as soon as he came over. Yep. Really like it. Uh, the blade change, sorry, the guard guard mechanism, yep. that's really super easy. It is a little bit fat though, so over our cutting and our grinding and stuff, it mm. did feel quite fat here. Yeah. Maybe it's because it's got a good motor in it, but we, we noticed that a little bit, didn't we? We did. Uh, the Bosch disco lights on the top, which I actually love. Yeah, the LEDs are nice. Yeah, I, obviously a fair bit of information too, but I like pimp. Uh, the switch is funny. You, you flick the switch on, yep. and if it doesn't lock in perfect, which it often doesn't, yep. you have to wait for it to spin down to then go again. It might sound silly, but you're not going to pick that up in a shop, are you? No. Uh, and it's it's frustrating using it again and again and picking it up, putting it down, picking it up. Yeah. It gets quite annoying. Yeah. Uh, you would, um, if it was your grinder, you would get used to it and stop making the mistake regularly. Yeah. Because we're not used to the push up and click in yeah. motion. It kept, You'd hope so. Because yeah. if not, it'd be stinking frustrating. So yeah. other than that, the, the body is quite nice it's, there. It's a nice tool. The Metabo, super slim. I really like it. The switch is easy. I would personally like a bit more rubber over molding. It's quite a flat plastic and it's lovely to use. I just reckon if you're doing grinding, uh, sorry, uh, concrete cutting all day, yeah. this is going to be quite slippery. Yeah. Just a little thing. I was worried about the battery mechanism here yeah, at the so start because it's got a little bit of wobble. Haven't had an issue. It's been great. Uh, I quite like their guard mechanism, mechanism as well. Yeah. So that's actually quite tidy. Yeah. Uh, the Hitachi, a couple of things. It's a little bit funny when you've, where you've actually got to have your fingers for the paddle. Yep. We both noticed it. Yeah. A little bit fat here, and you sort of have to have your fingers in a funny spot. Yes. Uh, the guard change, it stinks. Yep. It come open on us so many times. It's so long. Also, if you've got the guard in a certain position, you have to push it past the paddle, which I think is obscene. Yeah. So it, It's a clash. Um, it is a clash, and it's, it's a, oh, we think that's badly designed. It's a poor, to be fair. poor guard design for sure. Yeah. So... The Hilti um, is also, f like the AEG, quite fat in the body. Yep. You don't notice that when you're grinding, but you really notice it when you're cutting. Yes. Um, and makes it uncomfortable for extended cutting usage. Yep. Other than that, amazing quality in the hand. smooth and... Yeah. yeah. The Makita grinder, um, it has a lever type action for opening, changing the guard like the Hitachi. Yes. Not as crazy long. No. But it is still... An old school way, you know, over time it vibrates open. Yeah, we have to tighten the Phillips head up a couple of times. Yeah, it? we're not a big fan of that. The rest of the tool is, is nice. It's yep. long. Yeah. It's got this extra section at the bottom <clears throat> that the others don't have. But what you get with that extra length is a variable speed yeah. on the tool. Which, which is, for some is massive. It's cool. Yep. Really cool. The Dewalt, there's nothing to say about it. No. Nah. This um, is, I think it, yeah, it's the latest grinder here in this bunch. Yep. And... They've, they've got everything right. It's very tidy. We did try and find stuff for each one that we went, oh, whatever, remember? That was superb, wasn't it? It was. And the Milwaukee, this unit's been around a while, yeah. had a lot of use. Um, it uh, it does vibrate the most. Yeah. Um, it, it's kind of the least comfortable for extended yep. use. Not ergonomically, just like, it, you know, it goes through the disc a little bit. It's, yep. um, it vibrates a bit. But, man, this thing does not want to stop. Nah. No. It just wants to keep going and going. Yep. Um, it's pretty comfy to use, I think, other than that vibration issue. Yeah. Hand-wise, it's cool. Now, with the tests that we chose, we just wanted to quickly explain what we did and why we did it. Yep. Um, we wanted to mainly use um, the jig to do our runtime and our power to take the human element out of it as much as we could um, so that we get a, a more scientific kind of result. Yep. The jig isn't perfect by any means, but it's a lot better than us just going, I think I'm pushing the same Correct. pressure as last time. Yeah. We also wanted to use it in our hands a lot, concrete and steel and, and, and grinding, so that we got a good feel for the little intricacies of each tool. Yeah. Um, we know that this testing is heavily focused on cutting because that was the only way that we knew how to use it in a jig. Yep. Um, which means that the grinding performance isn't scored particularly highly um, and uh, that's a bummer but it's just it is what it is yeah um, we think that most people use cordless grinders mostly for cutting anyway which yeah. is lucky yeah for us yeah it is now in regards to our battery choices we armed and art about it for so long and argued and, and thought about it what we ended up settling on was for the runtime test using the most similar battery we could yeah. which was something close to a 5 amp hour battery yep yeah. But for the power test, we went for the best battery available on each brand. Yep. Some brands that meant 
just your normal five or six amp hour battery. Yep. Others it meant a whopping nine amp hour or a seven amp hour with um, you know improved cells in the, yeah. in and. No, that's not fair, but that's what's available to the tool. Yeah. And we wanted to know the best performance you can get out of each tool. Absolutely. Well, if not, you're not you're going to be looking at the video going, hang on, what if I've got all the money in the world, I just, I want the biggest, baddest kit. Exactly. Yep. So, uh, again, that it was a very hard decision to make. Sorry if you don't like it, but that's what we did. Yeah, it's right. Uh, the, one, the one thing I will note is that the AEG, uh, this is AEG's brushless, let's just say that, the force battery, uh, it performed, well, it didn't perform the same. It performed worse, yeah. this grinder, with the force battery. So what we think has happened, the force battery has come out ready for the fusion tools. Yeah. And unfortunately, we're a bit devastated. The updated version of this, the fusion, fusion grinder, has just been sent to us. I know. As we're, testing's done and we're wrapping this thing up. So it's a little bit disappointing. Yeah. Uh, but the 5 amp hour standard AEG battery was the best performer on that, so that's why you'll see it. It's a bit funny. We've been this. We did the footage for this in May. We started planning this in like February. Yeah, it's um, taken a while. This one has been a long labour of not so much love. No, there's a lot of lost love in it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, did you want to just explain what the jig was? Yeah, so the jig it was very basic, um, folks. It was just a steel frame that I made up, and all we did was just have a couple of pivot points. And we worked out a way to clamp the battery with some tape so there wasn't that wobble. And all we've got is just having the grinder do that with almost zero friction. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we had a chain link welded to a bolt which went in uh, the thread for the handle. They're pretty much in the same position on they each are. grinder, we reckon. Yep. And that's as best a system as, as we could possibly think of. Someone's got a better idea, let us know. Maybe in 20 years we'll do another grinder comparison. <laughs> um, but look, it was very basic, but it took that human element out. As Dwayne was saying, I think I'm putting the same pressure on it. That's That wasn't good enough. No. So we weighted it specifically. All right, so now comes the exciting part, the yeah. scoring. Yeah. Of course, scoring is subjective. Yes. This is our opinion, but we're going to lay the table out for you so you can change the weighting to what you think or the scoring to what you think. Yep. Come up with your own numbers. This is the money shot. First of all, power. Score of 20 yep. out of the total of 50, so it's very highly weighted. Yep. We think it's really important. That's fair. Yep. This is really broken up into two, two groups, and we, we actually switched the grinders to make this easy for ourselves. The Bosch, the Makita, the DeWalt, and the Milwaukee are very powerful units. Yep. The other four over here are a reasonable step down yep. in, in, raw, pa in raw power. Yep. We gave top marks to the DeWalt and the Milwaukee. The Milwaukee, because you just can't stop the thing. <laughs> it just doesn't want to stop. It just maybe, keep punching. Maybe it's cut out. Like, maybe it's not even protecting itself as well as some of the others. It may not be. Some guys like that. Yep. The Dewalt because it just it just flies. It's, it, it's it, very fast. It's, well, it was the fastest of all the cuts, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it cuts everything yep. fastest. Yep. yep. Okay. Next is runtime, which is rated at fifteen, weighted at fifteen. Yep. Again, we think it's very important. Huge. Because these things chew through batteries. Yep. Um, the runtime was based on a per amp hour, so there was no advantage in the five point two of the no. Metabo over the the five and the Bosch. Yeah. Some are going to argue there are little advantages and stuff, but. There's only so much we could do. That's right. Big variation scores here from the Makita, who really killed it. Yep. And by the way, Makita seemed to win the run times a lot. They smashed it. Whether it's their little brains talking with the batteries, like you said, to the motor or something, yeah. they win a lot of run times. They do. Yep. Um, right through to the Hitachi, which was a little less than half. Yeah. So from the Makita, which is just mind-blowing. Yep. Um, so that's the, the run time out of 15. Then we move on to usability, which kind of covers ergonomics and features, and we're not going to talk too much about it because we already did that. It yep. was all the things that we nitpicked as we used them before. And uh, that's scored out of 10 because it's important how the tool feels, and sure. you know, if a switch bothers you a lot or it's just too fat in the hand, yeah. it's going to bother it's you. It's really important. It is. Um, you'll see top marks <coughs> there going to Metabo and DeWalt, which yep. are just so hard to pick on. Yeah. They're such nice tools to use. Yep. And then finally, we have charge time. We've only scored it out of five because we didn't want it to change the grinder comparison too much. No, because we're talking about the tool and the battery. Mm. Yeah, but it is becoming a bigger thing, isn't it? It is, especially as batteries get bigger. Yep. You don't want to wait two hours for your next battery. No, the talk never used to be charge time. Uh, traders would often go, oh, do you have a staff? And while, mm. like you were saying before, 
12 amp hours that you're starting to now talk. I don't want to be waiting forever for that battery again. So it's no, important. That's right. So you've got some real jets in the Hilti charger yep. and the Hitachi charger right through to the very slow EG. Yeah, there's got to be an update coming for that soon. It must be. Now they've got 9 amp hour force batteries. Yeah. Surely there's something coming. There'd have to be. Yep. Which gets us to the total score out of 50. Um, so here we have our winners, <coughs> yep. and we uh, you can see basically it's just the maths. We didn't even look at it until the very end. Yep. And the Makita and the Dual have drawn. Yeah. We hate draws. Yeah. We wanted a winner, but you can't pick it. We we couldn't pick it. I know. We should have. Be nice to have one. Now we both have to have one of each. That's right. <laughs> it's just, we don't fudge the numbers. Well, whatever the numbers say yeah. is what you get. Yep. Um, brilliant tools. Yeah. Really lovely tools. Uh, we've used the um, paddle version of the Makita. Yep. They also have a switch they version. They do, yes. And DeWalt also have a paddle version. We've yep. got a switch here. So if you're already thinking that, and the switch is even better for you, then that's going to go up a point, isn't it? I love switches. So, yeah. Yeah, although they're not quite as... I say I do, but then my, my one that I have in my shed's a paddle. Yeah. So, anyway. Um, so, behind those, very close, you've got the Bosch on 43, yep. the Milwaukee on 42, the Metabo on 41. Yeah. There's not a massive disparity between those five, is there? No, those five are very close. Yep. Um, really, really nice grinders. Then you've got a little bit of a drop-off to the Hilti on 38, yep. and then a substantial drop-off to the Hitachi and the AEG. Yes. Um, so, yeah, that's just the numbers. It is a comparison. Yep. The scoring is designed to separate them. Correct. Yeah. Alrighty, so just on pricing, folks, really, really quick. These skins, anywhere from about 260 to 350 But I'm telling you now, sales, skins, kits, country, it all changes. Yeah. So there's your rough thing. Go do your research as you probably already are. Yeah, we're not really interested in, in assessing the value right now. No. Um, now, we did want to say, you've seen the scores, um, but... It doesn't mean just because these guys won that it's the best grinder for you. No. Because if you're grinding all day, if you're on a flap disc all day, in our minds, the Hilti is the best unit for it. Yes. It was just so nice. Yep. So nice to use. It's super, super smooth. Yep. Yep. Just on that one real quickly for me, old mate Vic at work picked up the Hilti when we had that and the AG, I got them at the same time. Yep. Um, really didn't like that because mm. he does a lot of cutting. Absolutely love this. Super, super smooth with the cutting. Yeah. He really liked it. So it's you just got to go know what you want out of it. Yeah. And start playing that game from there. The Bosch has got three speeds. Actually, before we said the um, Makita's in with a variable speed, and it is. Oh. But the Bosch has three speeds. Okay, that's that and, is true. And the Hitachi has its auto mode, which is kind of like a, a, an automatic two speed. Yeah, that is. And I, look, I really like the auto mode. You don't like it. Don't like it I right. love it because mm. I get sick of a grinder ringing in my ear. And when you sort of take off and you, you move aspect. something, mm. it does drop back. Apologise to Proc, uh, to Bosch for that one. Yeah, yeah. That's my fault. Yeah, for sure. Um, also, you you might have a big preference for switch or for paddle. Yep. Um, you may constantly find your battery getting in the way, and the Tabo's ability to flick the other way. Yes. Might might be exactly what you need. Yep. Yep, for sure. And then when you, if we also can really touch on the battery part again, yeah. uh, very quickly. If you have some high power units in the 54 volt flex volt, yeah. um, then since this is at the top, you're going to start leaning towards here because you've already got the big buggers. Well, yeah. I mean, if you're picking between Makita and DeWalt and you want a grinder that lasts all day, what are you going to choose? A platform that's got 9 amp hour as its top or 6? Yeah. Could be important to you. Yep. Maybe not. Yep. So um, the score, the, the winning scores don't mean everything. No. You do need to assess. Yep. Um, the units but on certainly there. look at the data that Dwayne gave you because as we just spoke about here yep. really quickly this won the runtime test yep. so you well, know and, and everybody looks at it and goes oh it's a little battery well guess what batteries ain't batteries that's true alright well um, I think that's all we're going to talk about today yep um, I'm sure you'll have lots of questions put them in the comments we will answer them absolutely yeah we will we love uh, getting ha getting into the nitty gritty in the comment yep. section with people yeah but read the damn data before you start hammering us because <laughs> we've given you plenty of data <laughs> so don't slag us off before you read the data and watch the whole video yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but other than that uh, please head over to Instagram and Facebook and yep. subscribe to us there yeah for sure. hit the subscribe button here if you haven't already yeah, subscribe here um, like Head over to our website, oztooltalk.com. Yep. Um, I'll probably at some point put up an article for this as well. Yep. Um, and just big thanks for watching.
Yep. We know it's a long video. Hope the journey's been worth it for you. Yeah. Thanks very much, guys. Bye.